Here we have the SteelSeries Rival 300. First let's do a button check. The left and right clicks feel a little bit spongy, but I found them quite comfortable during game and in general Windows use. The side buttons are actually better than most mice. They have good tactile feedback, they click in nicely, there's not much travel time, and they feel quite solid. The DPI button is raised above these two ridges, which prevent your fingers from slipping and accidentally touching it. So it's well positioned and easy to click in, but it only gives you two different DPI settings to set it to. There's not much tactile feedback on the scroll wheel, it is a little bit spongy, but I think there's enough there, and it's not a deal breaker. It travels well and smoothly, so personally this is good for me. The textures on the side are a rubber hedgehog, meaning they're a rubber finish, but they're actually quite spiky somehow. It's not a problem, it doesn't hurt or anything like that, it's just a bit odd to actually feel spiky rubber. It feels like a solid build, there is no rattle. Even when you're tapping this mouse, it doesn't actually make a rattle. It has a nice flexible rubber cable that doesn't get in the way and doesn't drag on the pad. It's also about 2 meters in length. As with other SteelSeries mice, the feet seem a bit loud or maybe there's a bit of plastic rubbing on the pad. Here's a sound comparison test between the EC2A and the Rifle 300. So they're a bit louder but not by much, and they're actually pretty good quality. In game I haven't been hindered by the mouse feet at all. With a bit of the cable being weighed with the mouse too, it's 104 grams. Considering its size, that's actually quite low. Here's a better look at the shape. It is for right-handed people only. It's slightly rounded on the left for your thumb, and with just a slightly rounded edge on the right-hand side. Overall I'd consider this a fairly safe shape. The hump is more toward the back, which says to me that it's more for palm grippers and claw grippers. I think people who use fingertip grip might struggle a bit with this one, depending on the size of their hands of course. Here's how it looks in palm grip, plenty of room for fingers, and plenty of room for thumb, not going to touch the buttons unless I want to, and there's very little space in between the mouse and my palm. Now I don't use claw grip, but I'd imagine this is what it would look like, so you should still have plenty of room, and it should feel fairly comfortable. And the base of this mouse is why it gets a little bit misleading. While it is a very large mouse, because it's only 5.5cm across here and 7 back here, it's this strange hybrid where I feel I can aim it even though it is a big mouse. If you have big hands and you use this mouse, please drop me a comment below and tell me how well you aim with it compared to, say, the Death Adder. And before you forget, I am trying to grow the channel, so if you can hit the subscribe button for me, that would be great. So moving on, there seems to be a slight incline in the button which gives it a bit of an impression. Because it's so wide though, it should feel comfortable for a lot of people. There's a lot of surface area there that allows you to choose where you put your fingers. And again, because the mouse wheel is protected by the ridge, it's unlikely that your fingers are going to slip and hit it. So there's an optical sensor in this, it's a Pixar PMW3310. So first let's do some rocket jump testing. This is why I flick the mouse really, really quickly and lift the mouse a lot, just to see if there are any problems. If I can't rocket jump with the mouse, there's no way I'm going to use it. I find this test to be good, because it will usually expose a problem that usually wouldn't be found in a normal test. But as you can see, this one's performing quite well. No spin outs at all. Feels good. I've tested liftoff distance and it seems to be only one DVD. So at about 1.4, maybe 1.7 millimeters, somewhere in that range. Now for testing small movements, so precision aiming, I have this mouse on 3500 DPI at 0.5 sensitivity in game. Quake ignores the window sensitivity, so it's just raw input. Now I've got this fully zoomed in to one FOV, that's field of view. I'm just moving the mouse slowly and it's picking up every single move that I do no matter how slow, and it's quite smooth when I move it quickly. This is a really good performance for a sensor. Now even at 3200 dpi, this sensor feels very snappy, so it's very responsive. I can't feel any delay there at all. And just quickly, this is at sensitivity 4, at 400 dpi. Same precision movement test. It performs as you'd expect, I don't think I can find a problem with this sensor. 
Although, as I always say in my reviews, I do not recommend using low DPI because it is a bit wobbly and a bit jerky compared to the higher DPI. But again, I wouldn't recommend using over 4000 either. And a quick rocket jumping test at 400 DPI, just to show that the sensor doesn't spin out. All good. Despite being a big mouse, I feel I can aim it quite well. I'm fairly confident with my tracking, so any rapid fire weapon. It takes me a little bit to get into the groove, but once I do, I'll usually hit a lot of the shots. Projectiles, pretty much spot on. And I feel like I can rail too, like there are some really tight shots I've been doing with this one. It's still not quite at the level that I found at the Zowie EC2A, but again, I think it's just hand size. For someone with a bigger hand, this might be a really good option. And best of all, I actually felt quite comfortable. I mean, I really don't like big mice usually because they are so hard to move and so hard to aim. But as I was saying earlier, I mean, this mouse is kind of like a medium mouse in disguise of a big mouse because I feel I can actually aim this. I mean, it's a little awkward, it's a little uncomfortable, but overall, my aim is quite solid with it. I'll miss some easy shots that I think I should hit, and yet I'll hit other shots that I don't think I should have actually hit, like that one right there. So overall, I'd say it's a good aiming performance. And I'd say for people with bigger hands, the experience would be even better. Here's a look at the software, and you'll notice that you can change the color of the scroll wheel and the logo. So I've got this on the Spectrum Cycling, or Color Shift as I call it, and I've just selected the first rainbow there. And of course, if you just want to use a plain color, it is an RGB mouse and you can choose the one you want. The CPI goes from 50 all the way up to 6400. And a nice feature is that you don't need to actually rely on this clicking of the dial. You can just type in the one you want. So 400 CPI, done. You do have the options for acceleration and deceleration down here. Leave angle snapping off because that'll help you draw straight lines and that's something that you don't need. And default polling rate of 1000 Hertz. For button configuration, you can change it to keyboard, macros, media buttons. That'll give you the options of mute, next, play, pause, and so on. So in conclusion, this is a big mouse. It's 13 centimeters long, but because it's only got a 5.5 centimeter base at the front, it does feel like a medium, maybe even a smaller sort of mouse. I think it's deserving of a lot of praise. I've been using it for a few days now, and I've really enjoyed playing games with it and even just general Windows use. I was a bit skeptical of the price of this one, but now that I've used it, and considering all the features that you do get, I think this is definitely worth it. I'll leave some Amazon links in the description for you if you do want to purchase it. I hope that helps you make your buying decision. And make sure you subscribe because I will be doing comparison reviews of this mouse in the near future. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.